Hey folks, it's Foxy here, back with another relationship story. So, what's my ex up to these days? Here's the scoop, my ex-wife, who's 48 and was married to me for 20 years, left me a year and a half ago for a guy who was married to her high school best friend. Quite the friend, right? Recently, I discovered that our supposed six-year-old daughter isn't actually mine, she's his. She knew from the start of the pregnancy and kept it from me. My name is on the birth certificate, though, and I plan to fight for custody. Even if she's not biologically mine, she's still my daughter as far as the law is concerned. This revelation felt like a real blow. When I asked her if it was him or me, she chose him, citing that he can perform in bed better than I can. That's all it came down to for her, bedroom satisfaction. Never mind that I worked two jobs to support her while she stayed home with our kids and had an affair. I sacrificed my own career and dreams for her, putting our family first. My ex has always been distant and cold. Dealing with her bipolar disorder was tough, but I endured it, believing it was beyond her control. I later found out she admitted to friends that she hit me out of frustration or when she didn't get her way. My children saw her mistreating me, and I hated that they had to witness it. At one point towards the end, she was angry at me for not taking the trash out the moment. I fell in love with someone, and I know now that those days are dead and gone, and had been for years. After everything came to light, my wife sat down with her friend, whose husband she was cheating with, and told her point blank, yes, it's true. No, I'm not sorry. Then my wife got up and walked away. I was told this by her friend. My wife left, took the kids, and moved in with him into an apartment behind the one we shared. Even then, I held on to the hope that she would see the grass wasn't greener with him. He had cheated on his own wife several times, besides with my wife, and she knew this. I waited that entire first year, hoping she would come back. She kept the apartment keys, and I assumed she was still holding on to them because she knew she would come home. But at the end of that year, they began their cruelty again, with him constantly dropping by the bus stop as I was putting the kids on the bus for school and telling me, I've come to see my daughter off to school, not your daughter, mine. I told him, then why were you so content for the past five years to let me raise her, to have my last name, let me be there at her birth, and raise her as mine? Where were you? Why is my name on the certificate as her father instead of yours? That almost earned me a punch to the face and did earn me a drunken visit from both of them at the end of the night. He showed up to fight my ex, then decided to make everything public, posting on Facebook and bragging about his new girlfriend. Our friends were shocked and reached out to me and his wife about it. I made sure to grab all the screenshots I could. She doesn't seem to care about the hole she's dug for herself with our upcoming divorce. Then again, why should she? I already got her with the paternity test. In the end, I became self-destructive. I kept wondering what I could have done differently or better. She blamed me for not being around for her, but if I wasn't working two jobs, how could we have survived? I didn't clean when I got home because I was too tired, and she screamed at me about the trash when our kids had colored on all the walls, torn down blinds, and put holes in the walls under her watch. But not taking out the trash after working 16 hours was the problem. The worst part was that I wanted my family back so badly that I believed it was my fault. It took a while to see the truth of it all. Everything changed with my brother. He was determined to get me to play in his band, and even though I declined, he insisted that I meet the other members and decide then. That changed everything for me. I still declined, but I struck up a friendship with them and ended up casually dating a friend that the rhythm guitarist introduced me to. I quickly fell in love with this woman, who is 45, and it was a relief to be in a loving relationship with someone who wasn't involved in a 24-7 screaming match that usually ended with me getting hit. Throughout this time, as I've mentioned, my ex still had the keys to our apartment. She would occasionally let herself in and drop off stuff for the kids. The first time she let herself in while my new girlfriend was there did not go well. She called me that night asking who my girlfriend was and why she was in our apartment. I enjoyed telling my ex that my girlfriend was none of her business. My ex had moved on, left me, and was living with someone else. In the last few months, 
my ex has become erratic over my new girlfriend and has even begun to stalk her. My ex sent my girlfriend a Facebook friend request and demanded that she accept it. When my girlfriend refused, my ex called me, screaming that I needed to tell her to accept it because she needed to see what kind of person my girlfriend was and that I was having our kids around her. My girlfriend grabbed the phone from me and told my ex that she did not need to add her as a friend. Any communication about the kids could be done through messenger or phone calls, and that my ex would not have access to our private life, friends, and family because she was not part of my girlfriend's personal life. This did not sit well with my ex. Later, my girlfriend showed me a sudden burst of friend requests from people who had my ex as a friend. My ex then started letting herself into my place every weekend when I wasn't home, snooping around. I was on the phone with my girlfriend, who was staying with me while I was at work, when I heard my ex walk in. My girlfriend asked if there was something she needed, and my ex claimed she wanted to see how much milk I had in the fridge for when the kids came over. My girlfriend told her we had it handled, and my ex left. When I got home, I demanded the apartment key back since she no longer lived there. She then took my son's keys and made copies for herself. When my lease was up, my girlfriend asked me to move in with her so that we could distance ourselves from my ex. My ex did everything she could to hinder this, including calling the police and telling them I was leaving with her belongings. When asked what was hers, she couldn't name anything that was left at my place. Now we get the kids every other weekend, and I was told by my children that they are not allowed to talk about what they did with me because my ex doesn't want to hear it. That didn't last long, now she pumps my kids for all the information she can get. I'm sure it's jealousy. We live on the beach, my girlfriend is very well off, and when we get the kids, we take a short walk to the boardwalk, let them play on the beach, or visit the aquarium if they return home with prizes. My ex throws them away now. The issue with my ex is that, in the last few times she dropped off my kids, I noticed she now dresses and looks very similar to my girlfriend. She dyed her hair and cut it to match hers. Whatever we do with the kids, my ex runs out the following week and tries to do the same thing with them. If we go to the beach, she takes them to the beach. If we go to the zoo, she takes them to the zoo. If she finds out what we have for dinner, she makes the same thing and demands our kids tell her who they liked more the week before. My son asked to live with us because he said my ex was crazy. You better believe I'm using all this in court. Just when I didn't think things could get any crazier, the other night she starts texting me private photos. What the heck? My girlfriend was sitting next to me when they started coming in, and I immediately got defensive. I told my girlfriend I didn't ask for them and that my ex and I aren't talking like that. I offered my phone to my girlfriend to go through and see for herself. My girlfriend looked at the pictures and asked for my ex's number so she could text her own pictures back and show her how it's done. I called my ex and asked her what the heck she was doing. I told her that my girlfriend was sitting next to me, saw the messages, and was angry. My ex tried saying she meant to send them to someone else. My girlfriend said that my name was at one end of the alphabet while her boyfriend was at the other. Then she asked her who the new guy was since it was meant for someone else. My ex hung up. I really don't know what game my ex is playing. This is all just crazy to me. Let me clear up a few things because the comments keep coming back as if I'm still living there. My girlfriend did not send her own pictures in return. That was just her verbal response to what my ex had done, saying that she should show her how it's done because the pictures were of my ex with her shirt off, making duck faces at a mirror with her phone in her hand. My girlfriend simply made a joke about my ex's lack of imagination. I do not live in my old apartment that I shared with my wife anymore. I have moved in with my girlfriend. Despite me taking the keys back from my ex, she took my son's keys and used those to keep breaking in. She does not have access to my new place, and my kids don't even have keys for this reason. I'm currently fighting for custody of my kids, and it's not easy with me not being the biological father of my daughter. But I'm fighting based on the birth certificate listing me as the father, which gives me parental rights to my daughter. My ex was prescribed medications, but I'm having serious doubts if she's taking them six. I check my kids for bruises and make sure they are not being maltreated, but she made the mistake of getting physical with her boyfriend. 
he punched a hole in the wall and let her know that if she raises a fist at him again, he'll fight back. Now, for the top comments before reading the updates, from what you've described here, your ex seems to be a few french fries short of a happy meal. Quite honestly, she sounds dangerous. You should talk to your attorney and see if you can obtain a restraining order against her. Yes, yes, and yes. Also, download a co-parenting app to use with her to discuss the children, and then block her number and profile on all social media sites. You don't want to mess with crazy, just walk away from it. Your ex is stunned beyond belief that you were able not only to move on, but to move on with someone who is better than her. She probably thought you'd be on the hook for life so that she always had a backup plan in case her relationship with a fair partner went south. Good on you for not letting her run your life. Also, if I may, I'd suggest using a co-parenting app for communication and only communicating through that application. Then, block her and her partner on all social media. Good luck, my friend. You've got this. You know there is no cure for bipolar disorder, right? She did you a favor. It sounds like you are living your best life. Insist on a co-parenting app for communication and block the crazy ex everywhere else. I'm trying to live my best life, but I'm haunted by it all. I just want this divorce over with and to get my kids away from her. It's going to take a long time to heal from it all and what? Here's a revised version with corrected errors and punctuation. I have now is almost too perfect, and I don't feel like I belong here at all. I feel horrible for everything I'm putting my girlfriend through with this mess. I feel like I've dropped a bomb on her life with my issues. She's been a lifesaver by taking me in and changing her life around to make room for me and my kids. I feel like I've destroyed her life with my problems. The best revenge is a life well lived. I see you taking your revenge, and I love it. Do not, under any circumstances, allow your girlfriend to send her pictures to this person. It may have seemed like a funny idea in the moment, but your ex would definitely post them everywhere she had the chance, potentially using them to harm your chances at custody. Your best bet is to end all contact with your ex except via a parenting app. She is malicious, and you need to limit your exposure to her. That was just my girlfriend's response. She chose to be humorous about it instead of flying off the handle, which shocked me. I was expecting her to accuse me of trying to get my ex back, but she handled it with a joke first. Update, through a paternity test, I found out that my daughter is not my biological child but the child of my ex-friend, who is now living with my ex. This past weekend was my daughter's official sixth birthday. It wasn't my weekend to have the kids, but my ex asked me if I wanted them for my daughter's birthday. Of course, I took them. I was even granted an extra two days with them. I figured they had some plans and were pawning the kids on me so they could go do whatever. But the thing that strikes me is that this is the first time he can celebrate his daughter's birthday, and instead of doing something special as her father, she's given to me and my girlfriend. Does anyone else think this is a tad messed up? He's a disgusting degenerate who had a child with another man's partner, so don't make the mistake of expecting him to suddenly start acting like a responsible adult after he's already gotten away with acting like scum for so long. Let's add to the list that this poor girl will be subject to lousy parenting by most of the adults in her life. Document this disinterest if you decide to revisit custody. Document, document, document. Keep a log of the time she is with you, not just the days or hours but the start time and end time each day. You may never need it, but if you do, you'll be glad you kept records. My ex left my daughter with me significantly more time than our parenting plan specified to go see her boyfriend in another state. Later on, she took me to court to get permission to move to that state to be closer to her boyfriend. When the judge saw my log of how much extra time I had been spending with my daughter, he increased my parenting time permanently and reduced my child support. I didn't even ask for that. I was really glad I kept track. My ex was furious. Interesting. Are you still considered her legal father, and do you pay child support? Also, if you haven't already, consider using a co-parenting app with the ex so that incidents like this can be documented. You may want to revisit custody as the child ages if this sort of behavior continues. I'm glad to hear that you are in another relationship. 
Any plans for marriage or children? It is my name on the birth certificate, which is another issue my ex caused. She knew I wasn't the father but made me believe I was. A birth certificate is just as binding as adoption papers, so I am still considered her father and am currently fighting for custody. As for the new relationship, marriage could be a future possibility. She is definitely more grounded and has stronger morals than my ex. She has made my children her top priority. My kids love and have bonded with her, and my son has even opened up to her more than he has to me or my ex. I was a bit upset about it at first, but I understand. She's not a parent and can provide a response to him that is more focused on him, without making him feel like he's in a parental tug of war. I'm glad he has that. Regarding us having children, she is unable to have any. For the second update, I have to shake my head. Saturday night, I received an angry text from my ex, saying that she hopes I'm happy that. I won. I know I shouldn't have engaged in the conversation, but I asked what her problem was. She responded with something that made no sense and then told me to go ahead and gloat, gloat times ten, because something happened to her. She then accused me of being a know-it-all. When I asked what I was supposedly a know-it-all about, she went off on me about how all men are pigs and can't be trusted. From this, I gathered two things. She was drunk off her but again. The guy she left me for had cheated on her. I didn't say anything when she was like that, any response would have led to a fight, and I chose not to get into it. I just read the texts and thought that she got exactly what was coming to her. She left me for my friend, who was married and had cheated on his wife three times, with her being number three. When I brought this up as she was leaving me, she told me, I know what I'm getting into. I guess she thought she was the end all to his wayward ways. When she ran out of insults to fling at me, she shifted her attack to my girlfriend, telling me she's ugly as heck. I could have had any girl, but I chose someone special. My girlfriend is stunning both inside and out. My ex is extremely jealous of my new girlfriend. As I've mentioned in older posts, my ex took to stalking my girlfriend and trying to change her appearance to look like hers. The attacks continued, with my ex telling me that I don't love my new girlfriend and that it's impossible for me to fall in love with the first woman I sleep with after losing her. My ex and I had been apart for a year when I met my now girlfriend. It took some time for me to feel comfortable trusting someone again, and that trust was earned not given easily. Then my ex claimed that I only love my new girlfriend because I lost my apartment and that I'm kissing my girlfriend's butt for a place to live, as she so interestingly put it. According to her, it's only love when you're homeless. I had my own apartment across the street from my ex-wife because she decided to stay in the complex to flaunt the fact that she left me for my friend. When my lease was up, I decided to move in with my girlfriend and relocate my job there. I realized she was trying to pick a fight, and I refused to engage. Just when I thought my ex's provocations couldn't get any more ridiculous, she told me she was sorry for not being enough for me. I wanted to scream that it was actually me who wasn't good enough for her, that she was the one who left. Did she forget who walked out and who replaced the other? She left me for a married guy who repeatedly cheated on his wife. Quite the catch. Then she targeted my girlfriend claiming that she was the one I truly wanted and that my current partner couldn't compare. I'd had enough by then, so I asked her to reach out when she was sober and in a better state of mind, and then turned off my phone. When my girlfriend got home hours later, I warned her she might get upset and handed her my phone to read the messages herself. She read through it, laughed, and returned my phone, saying, looks like he cheated. I agreed and tried to reassure her, hoping the harsh comments wouldn't make her doubt me. They didn't bother her at all. She said my ex's narcissism really comes out when she's drunk and guessed that my ex was frustrated she couldn't come to me for revenge. I haven't heard anything else from my ex. I'm guessing she looked back at those texts the next day, felt embarrassed, and is probably back with him because she can't stand being alone. I'm relieved that your girlfriend found it amusing, she's a great woman, a significant improvement. My girlfriend is surprisingly calm and rational, which is refreshing but still takes some getting used to. I'm so accustomed to my ex's outbursts that my girlfriend's tranquility is a bit startling. I can really relate to this. My current girlfriend, 
when we argue, will calmly say, let's sit down and talk this out, whereas my ex, who lied, manipulated me for my money, cheated, and gaslit me, would either explode in rage or shut down and run away whenever things didn't go her way. With my new girlfriend, part of me wonders, this is nice, but what's the catch? It's incredible how much you learn from being with someone stable and rational. I'm still dealing with the fallout from my previous relationship, trying to unlearn the unhealthy patterns. Fights with my ex were intense, involving physical aggression and verbal abuse. With my new girlfriend, it's the opposite. She prefers to talk things through, explains her feelings, understands mine, and suggests compromises. Even during arguments, she'll suggest we take a break to calm down and return to the discussion later. I admit I sometimes react with anger because I'm used to the intensity of fights with my ex. It's a lot of work and healing to adjust.